challenging what is, inspiring what could be. These words are at the heart of an institution of learning, an institution that sits on the banks of Lac Léman, but has a reach that is felt across the globe, a philosophy and an approach that has developed leaders and transformed organizations for 75 years. This is the story of IMD so far. Europe, post-World War II and the exhausting toll it took on society, the green shoots of optimism about the future began to emerge. The world was going to regroup and industry and business would be at the forefront. Against this backdrop, the story of IMD begins. These were the words of a group of Chinese engineers who were working with Alcan, a Canadian aluminum company, on a project along the Yangtze River. From this insight, a world where a geopolitical perspective was crucial to successful business, Alcan created a training center for their managers in 1946. At the beginning, it yeah. was just just for Alcan. Just for Alcan. That's right. Eighty percent of, of the income was Alcan. It was a, a company training center, and in 1956, there was a, an opening. What they had in the early years was high potential Alcan managers that they saw would be able to run international operations for the for the company. This was known as CEI and expanded to become an independent institution. It was soon a significant force in the international academic landscape. A symposium for CEI's 25th anniversary led directly to the founding of the World Economic Forum, led by ex-CEI faculty member Klaus Schwab. And CEI forged close links with the Club of Rome, an influential organization that shared their belief that many challenges facing societies and businesses were interrelated and systemic. In 1981, it changed its name to IMI. IMI prided itself in every facet to be international, whether it was staff, participants, board members, management in general. They were so international. At the same time as CEI was taking shape, a short distance across the country in Lausanne, the genesis of another institution was emerging. On a three-day, 10,000-kilometer journey from Europe to Australia, two senior executives from Nestle, Enrico Bignami and Jean-Constant Cortesi, reflected on a recent meeting with young Nestle executives who shared their views on how to better prepare themselves and their colleagues for the future. They discussed this meeting with a group of professors from Harvard soon afterwards, and Imade was born. Imade was like a startup. Small faculty, highly flexible, lots of bottom-up innovation. In the first MBA class, there was uh, uh, Kel Christensen, you know, the owner of Lego, and there was uh, Schmidaini and others. Uh, so it was not, it was not a, bad, <laughs> a bad audience. Huh? We had people who were coming from important businesses. IMD has been huge for me. When I went there, uh, the IMD MBA program was a very, very important you know, program in, on the world stage. And we were right up there with the very, very best. I don't think I would have got as far as I have in my professional life had it not been for IMD. We were entrepreneurial, we were taking risks. We didn't have much of a competition at the time. The school flourished, and I do think one can call them the oldest schools of this type. Two schools both with business at their heart, both growing, both exposed to the harsh realities of business survival they taught in their own classrooms. Increasing competition, the ability to scale, and financial pressure threatened the survival of both. We had no strategy, and we were challenged on that by one interesting man who very soon after became president of Oilbo. And with a nice smile, he say, uh, you, you teach us that strategy is having a mission. What's your strategy? It was very right, not open. It was a challenge, of course, to find people who would come here full time. Mm -hmm. And the second big thing that happened was the expansion of our board. And the third challenge, of course, was we created a lot of new building here. 
we raised about 30 millions of uh, Swiss francs, which maybe today isn't a, a lot of money, but it was a lot of money at that time. It's a lot of money and, today, and, too. And we had to persuade <laughs> the people who were, you know, going to finance this, and Nestle was, of course, a, a key player in all that, that this was a worthwhile project. The solution to these challenges came increasingly into view. With so many similarities, it seems some form of partnership between IMI and IMEDE would offer the best way forward. But at what cost? I don't understand. There is IMEDE an hour drive away, very similar to us, also created by a multinational company. Are we at least talking to each other? Both of them being small had a pioneering spirit. Uh, both of them were highly international. Both of them put participants at the center of the proceedings. Both of them were not so much academic research oriented as practical applied research oriented. And one said, well, keep it to yourself, but we probably went to merge. I said, well, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in joining them because it was so sensible. We were not terribly keen on the idea of a merger, mm -hmm. um, but we had been told by our board, whether you like it or not, uh, no. there, there's going to be a merger. It's going to happen, so you better get used to it. And what uh, were the reason given to you for this? As you know, both the, the boards of those institutions uh, were representatives of large multinational corporations. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, look, we kept getting requests from IMEDE and from IMI for money mm -hmm. and for participants, etc. Look, Switzerland's a small country. Mm -hmm. You're both relatively small institutions. We don't think you're viable unless you get together. Geneva School moved here. Mm, yeah, the physical, yeah, the physical move movement was, was, was painful. painful. Uh, you had built a new building, you had place for both. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was practically the best thing to do. Yeah. But emotionally, emotionally, it was difficult. was difficult. And I think people were both attached to the place and to the culture, uh, and they were afraid to lose that. And thus, the merger was completed not without tensions, but with much common DNA. Unlike many other schools, management education at IMD is not an afterthought. Executive learning here has a history dating back to the mid-1940s, preceding the school's highly selective MBA program by more than 30 years. I mean, I think one of the surprising things in this institution is when you come into it is to find that a lot of the offices are actually empty because the faculty are not here. And I think the average faculty member probably spends you know, two to three days a week out of the school working in enterprises in some shape or form, either doing research or writing cases or in some cases consulting projects or trying to work with management on the development of educational programs. The diversity in terms of countries and companies and functions really added a, a richness to the, to the kind and nature of the participation that we could have here. So I, I found it particularly relevant and, and a very powerful experience. The merger took the two original cultures and put them on a sound financial footing. It created a new entity that was viable and this was a key turning point. It was exciting, it was, the merger brought a lot of new energy. The whole uh, working together among the former uh, colleague, competing colleagues became much better. I'm very proud of how IMD, after the merger of my school at the time and uh, IMEDE has developed, I feel very proud, I would nearly say as a proud, proud father of, uh, let's say, the united uh, institutions. With the merger behind it, the new institution began to emerge as more than just the sum of its parts. Under the stewardship of the long-serving president, Peter Lorange, IMD began to become a globally acknowledged and respected name. We developed a, a school which was highly effective, both in terms of effectively competing against the others, so we were ranked in the end at the very top. Of course, one of the DNA of IMD is that it must change fast, be very flexible. New buildings were inaugurated and a new home established in Lausanne. A campus that would evolve, progress and in time grow to be the home of a global brand. A symbol of excellence with a footprint that includes a campus in Singapore and activities in five continents. An impact that stretches far beyond. The pioneers who shaped this new future 
shared a commonly held desire to create a center of excellence that would always have a global outlook, punch far above its weight, and retain the shared DNA that would make this a special place. But what is this DNA? What makes IMD unique? And if such a thing can be captured, what is the IMD way? You have to just love and get energy from teaching and from moving the needle and from creating that impact and seeing that influence that you're having on humans, on people, on organizations. You, if you are a creative entrepreneurial person with an eagerness to do something meaningful, you can make it happen. Where in other academic systems, it's rigid, it's this, it's bureaucratic, da da da. And that's what always drew me to IMD. It's, it's a platform for doers. We are curious about things. We are curious about innovation, about new business model, about new government uh, model and strategy. And I think that this kind of uh, attitude of innovation, it's a mindset huh? uh, that we have had at IMD and that we still have at IMD uh, was uh, something very powerful. This mindset of curiosity and innovation has never been more relevant than it is today. In a changing world, pedagogical methods need to evolve. And IMD has put this at the forefront of its efforts, investing heavily in new methods of delivery for all its programs. So this morning, we were really privileged to participate in a virtual reality training exercise here at IMD. And what stood out for me is the fact that this is a whole body immersive experience. And that's the best kind of learning there is. You're not just learning at a cognitive level, you're learning with your entire body. This is when learning actually gets embedded. So that was amazing. Leadership is lifelong learning lifelong curiosity, lifelong eagerness to understand more and more how you can be a better person, a better leader, and bring out all the potential that you have. So we don't have a whole range of undergraduate programs. What we do is we specialize uniquely and specifically in the training and development of managers and organizations. So we take managers at all levels and help them kind of become the managers and leaders that they want to be and help organizations have the impact that they want to have in the world. As a leading academic institute, the MBA and EMBA courses sit at the heart of the IMD offer. Since its founding, IMD has been a preferred destination for some of the world's leading executives and companies. We've been working with them on their most pressing issues, developing their leadership, uh, talent and capabilities. And so we bring all of that expertise in our MBA program. The way the course is structured, like the discovery expeditions, I think that was very interesting. The opportunity to go into different countries and learn from other cultures. So indeed, I was really after what they were promising, which was really developing leaders. I think what is uh, really unique here at IMD is that the moment you step in into the classroom or a, a Zoom virtual room, uh, you get immediately the sense that participants uh, are there to challenge you and to challenge themselves. Well, I, when I considered an MBA, I was already running a company and I wanted to build up my leadership skills. Uh, IMD appeared to me as the perfect environment for that because of the holistic approach to leadership that is uh, provided here. Because it combines the knowledge and the skill set from the different business functions. And on top of that, there is a, a leadership stream which is strong and which connects to all the business functions. And I believe that is uh, the, the only uh, uh, key success factor that is required to lead in this diverse and international environment that are, we are moving uh, into. I was mesmerized by the whole uh, experience, the foundation, the people, the community that it created, and it just enabled me to see the world differently, that I can connect with anyone I'd like to connect with. While the MBA courses are focused on the individual, albeit in the broader context, INB has also forged an innovative path in the development of custom programs. The root of INB's custom programs go back to the days of CEI, when the innovative idea of partnering with companies took hold. As far back as the end of the 1970s, half of all CEI participants came from 50 business associates, including some of the world's largest corporations. And today, the list of major corporate clients is no less impressive. 
there came the realization that uh, IMD could occupy a space that was adjacent to consulting firms um, in providing executive education. Mars could have just focused on selling more dog food, but for them, pets are important to society and making the world better for pets is their purpose. So they move from focusing on selling dog food to actually making pet ownership aspirational and convenient for the world. And its growth rate, annual growth rate has more than doubled. So you're not talking about just incremental changes. You're talking about how do I step change growth? How do I step change profitability in terms of, uh, in terms of not just continuing to do and making more efficient what we're doing today, but really shaping what we're doing and how we're impacting the world and how we're changing the world, that's where we're going to find the growth and the profitability going forward. IMD started to work with companies like Sony, Panasonic, and Canon in 1990s. We now work with a dozen leading Japanese corporations on customized programs. We have a very good ecosystem in Japan for IMD. I think there's a lot of combination that made from Middle East a very attractive place for IMD and the competencies of IMD. We have been driving a lot of initiative in the region, and I think we both mutually, we co-created with the enterprises here, with the organization here, government and, and private sector, and it was very beneficial for both sides. We learned a lot and we shared a lot. Like all major academic institutions, research is embedded in the IMD way, and it's perhaps no surprise, given the DNA, that IMD's history would be filled with renowned research publications actionable, rigorous, thought-provoking work that has a major influence in the global business ecosystem. But it is the connection between research and teaching that has always set IMD apart. Research, thought leadership, and publications are an important part of my identity and a part of, or important part of who I am as an educator, as a professor, as a scholar. And I think one of the foundations of IMD is that thought leadership, is that research. So our entire body of faculty comes from that upbringing, so to speak. We all have that research foundations, that research training. And I think that's what makes us special and unique is that we can take that, we can understand it, and we can interpret it, and we can make it applicable to the classroom. The companies that you're engaging with become your subjects of research. So we have a large number of practitioners articles in Harvard Business Review and Sloan, as well as case studies that are published which clearly indicate that the heart of the faculty is in the work that they're doing in teaching and providing executive education as well. Perhaps it was inevitable that the IMD way, the unique setup, the profile of the faculty, the close ties with industry leading businesses, and the makeup of the participants would lead to the emergence of many initiatives that over time would become shining lights in the global business ecosystem. We started from the idea that when we were speaking about competitiveness, we were speaking about an ecosystem. It was not only about cost efficiency, it was about infrastructure, the education system, technology, skills, all those kind of issues were very important. And also we felt we could not do it alone at IMD. So we, we went into a network of 60 partner institutes around the world. So the challenge for us was to remain very focused on the methodology and very focused on something which was, from an academic point of view, very credible and which was also something which would uh, enhance our image, not only in the academic world, but of course in the business community. The World Competitiveness Center, for 30 years, has been promoting inclusive prosperity. We call it competitiveness, but competitiveness at the end is the ability of a nation to make sure that people have decent means of living in a fair way. IMD has been a little bit the birthplace of, of executive education or education for enterprising families. If family businesses get into trouble, it's very often linked to the family. And, and so, so, so they created effectively one of the first programs in the world that is really geared towards business owning families to help them uncover and tackle their challenges. I believe that we're kind of the only ones credibly able to do that. IMD is a well-recognized global entity with assets and resources that match up very, very well with those of man and choose to supplement and support our activities in developing our talent going forward. Uh, they have an incredible bandwidth of capabilities, knowledge, experience, and competencies that will meet the challenge of keeping man at the very cutting edge 
of learning and development expertise. In 2010, the Global Board Center was founded with the aim of creating long-term organizational success through strong boards. It brings together world-class thought leadership and global best practices in a systematic way to help boards reach their full potential. In 2015, the Global Center for Digital Business Transformation was created in partnership with Cisco. Its purpose is to prepare executives to take advantage of digital opportunities and to manage digital threats in a changing world. While large companies are crucial to the global economic ecosystem, IMD has long recognized the value of startups and how they can bring innovation and disruption to established markets. Long before it was popular, IMD has been firing up the startup scene and innovation economy. We decided that entrepreneurship should be one of the red threads in the program. And that's what led us to, for example, creating the IMD Startup Competition. At the time, we were the, only the second startup competition in Switzerland. Today, there are over 100. We have a, a jury to select the top 100 startups that are less than five years old. This year, like most years, almost 40% of them were startups that we had worked with. The commitment to lifelong learning, such an integral part of the IMD way is clear to anyone who has passed through its doors, real or virtual. The IMD Alumni Network fosters and facilitates ongoing opportunities to remain part of the IMD community long after the last session has ended. What we try to do is to really work with the alumni office of IMD to say how can we create an alumni experience that has something for everyone. I still uh, have um, an ongoing relationship with uh, the IMD alumni, and uh, I found that, that it's, it's also almost like an ongoing learning experience as well on its own. I would describe IMD as quite influential, even in this Far East country, but it's not the ivory tower. It's very pragmatic as well. I really value the human network that it brought to me, so I'm very grateful. Real learning, real impact. What was never lost on those who have shaped IMD's mission for the past 75 years, and on those who carry it out today, is that everything must be in service to making a real, meaningful difference in the world. All the teaching, the research, the publications and innovation in delivery, the connection to the local ecosystem, it is all focused on a clear goal, creating leaders who return to their organizations that benefit from their leadership skills to create real impact on their colleagues, their businesses, on society, and the world. IMD's impact has always been in that ability to help accelerate uh, what companies are doing and help them work better. And when they have an impact, IMD has an impact. And that impact from time to time is huge. So my primary focus is on leadership and how to bring leadership into the whole arena of influencing and persuading using a style of leadership that is not coercive or command and control. It's based on hostage negotiation ideas of how to influence and persuade and be able to build a team in which you can have a truly high-performing set of behaviors. I came in uh, coming to just a leadership program uh, because it was a leadership program at IMD. So because I had studied here, I was uh, curious about that leadership program. I came out uh, a changed man. Uh, and I would say since then, I've done more things in the last 12 years than I probably did in the 25 years prior to that. So in a, in a nutshell, HPL was a life changer, a real life changer. I was introduced by a very good friend who said, you have to attend this HPL program at IMD back in 2013. And I did apply and uh, went uh, for five days, totally unexpected. It was one of the most uh, life-changing experiences I ever had. And I just had, uh, I think three of our people attend uh, HPL last week. They all came back and they wrote to me and said, thank you for the gift. That, that really was, was the reply and I was very happy with that. And it's not just about retention. I think it really is a gift for them. And if they, if they, 
a gift to give back to their people in the company, great. If they give it to other people, it's also great. I wasn't sure my career was going in the right direction and I wanted, just wanted to do something else. And I got the idea to do an MBA and then I researched and figured out that it had to be IMD for me. The ability to look at a problem and really distill it to what is the real problem. And, and it, as you go through a life of uh, uh, business, this is really a unique thing to be able to do. Why I chose IMD? I went there because I thought it would be a better balance between learning about capitalism, making money, but also doing good for society and solving uh, the big problems, big social, environmental uh, issues of the day. And for, for me, particularly, this is most inspiring. My IMD experience led me to co-found Alma Clinics, and that has been my proudest career achievement. So I think without this course, I'm not sure if I would have had the support, the confidence to do what I'm doing today, to actually generate potentially the first vaccine for Alzheimer. This is my dream. IMD uh, lives up to the values of transforming leaders uh, because I am one of them who went into IMD with a very different mindset that looks at how can we build more schools? How can we build more hospitals? Some of the companies we've worked with have been acquired by Apple, by Intel, by other big players in the world. I cannot claim it's because of us, but we probably had a little bit of a, a help in that. One of the selective uh, courses that I did with an executive MBA, I actually put young activists uh, in the table to evaluate the projects of the executive MBA. The activist, criticized something and mentioned that this could be done in Ghana. He's from Ghana. And now we have three uh, executive MBAs that are working with uh, these activists in Ghana to bring, bring clean energy and create a new company in Ghana. So I think this kind of, of amazing things only happen at IMD, I would say. I first attended IMD in the early 90s. I uh, went on the Leading the Family Business course and the light bulbs went on for me. The impact of IMD on, the, on, on us as individuals, as shareholders, cannot be underestimated, quite frankly. Um, had we not gone there, had we just stumbled on, I'm not sure we would have a business, you know, William Grants and Sons would be in private hands these days. Even IMD underestimates the impact uh, it can have. I would go that far by saying, I don't think I could do what I'm doing today without actually having had this opportunity to participate in this course, and I'm still extremely thankful. Probably one of the best investments I've ever made. It certainly helped accelerate my career, give me confidence, and uh, and some, some, some tools that, that I, I didn't have in my tool bag. Well, you know, I was a, a pretty hard knuckle manager. I was always, you know, very, I'm still very ambitious, but maybe, you know, the, the whole caring element of leadership, empathy, and, and also real listening. For me, that was a real game changer. Institutionally, I feel an enormous sense of pride. Pride in everything generations of IMD faculty and staff have achieved over these 75 years pride in the positive impact of our alumni, the leaders that we help develop, and pride in, in the impact of the corporations we partner with and support. Individually, I feel rather humble. Uh, today's IMD faculty and staff, uh, and certainly me in particular, uh, we stand on the shoulders of giants, visionary and courageous individuals who innovated relentlessly over decades, and day after day built an amazing institution and trained a fantastic alumni group. Standing on their shoulders is humbling, but it is also incredibly inspiring, because from that height, you get to look into the future and you see how much more we can do together to live IMD's purpose and to contribute in a small way, but hopefully in a very real way, to a more prosperous, sustainable, and inclusive world.